Alright, so this video is going to be looking at making the dice tutorial. Uh, there's been a series of videos posted that have been looking at each individual step and each individual tool. It takes a wee bit longer, uh, but it's good if you've never used Inventor before. Um, and if you want to come back and look at a specific tool, um, I direct you to that video. But if you just want to go through the full process again and you've made it before and you just want to go through it again, um, or this is just the preferred way you'd learn the tools and you'd rather watch this video and stop it um, anytime and, and you want to make it along at the same time as me and you just stop the video or change the playback speed on YouTube uh, then this is the video for that. So I'm just going to go through every step, maybe explain them uh, just a little bit at uh, each of the tools uh, and we'll see where we go from there. So start new, metric standard mm.ipt if you click any of the other ones most likely you will end up in inches so it's best to click metric first uh, any pop-up that ever comes up in Autodesk Inventor most of the time it's fine to just hit ok uh, so I didn't even read that I just hit ok uh, start 2d sketch and then I'm going to click this work plane I'm going to go to my rectangle tool I'm going to go to my two point rectangle tool because I want to be in the middle of this axis and then I'm going to dimension these to 50. And then I'm finishing my sketch. Then I'm zooming out with my scroll wheel, going to extrude, clicking extrude, and then this is going to be 50, 50 by 50 by 50. To move the camera there, I held down the middle mouse wheel and just moved it up. I'm going to start off with side one. This is just going to be a circle in the middle. If you don't have these crosshairs, you'll have to dimension it um, with the edges. But mine is already in the center. Um, by clicking the edge, clicking the center, and then clicking the side, and then typing in 25. I didn't need to do that because I had the crosshairs already. I'm going to extrude, click there, which is my profile, and then I'm going to cut and then put it in one quickly do that again, click it should, click the circle, click cut, and one. Then I'm going to do side number two, draw my two circles and dimension them to 10. And then put them in place. So what happened there when I um, dimensioned it, I actually moved it out of the circle. Now it's normally best to dimension it in place before you do any dimensions to the actual shape because it can move it outside the actual shape, but it's not a problem, you can just trim it and get rid of it. So finish sketch and then I'm going to extrude them both. This time I actually had to click them and I'm going to cut and my two, my, two of my profiles have now been extruded. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sketch on side 3 and this time to make it a wee bit quicker for myself I'm going to actually dimension it while I'm doing the circles. So all I'm doing is clicking the circle, I'm not clicking anything else. Then I just click 10 and then enter. And I'm going to dimension these into place. Yep, finish my sketch, extrude, and then cut. So you might have to pause the video while you're doing this, which is totally fine, don't try and keep up with me. Um, this time I'm going to do my um, number four side, so same as what I was doing. Dimensioning it as I'm making the circle, 12.5, click, click, 12.5, and then I'm going to use the rectangular pattern tool. I'm going to click the circle, which is my geometry, so it's already selected that. And I'm going to click direction. I'm going to click this is my direction, and my, ver uh, my vertical is my direction, and it's wanting to put it up there, so I want to turn the direction, flip it around, and then all I need to do now is change my sizes to 25 because I want to go in halfway across. Finish sketch, extrude. I'm going to click all my uh, circles on my profiles and then cut and hit OK. Um, now I'm going to do side number 6. 
or I'll do side number five, keep it in order. So the same as what we just done. If you ever want to undo something, I always go Control Z, but you can always do it up there. So I'm just going to draw a circle in again. Ten. Dimension it into place. And then use my rectangular pattern tool again, click my geometry, the directions, and change my space in, flip my direction, and then my last circle is going right in the middle there. So you can see the dotted lines that came up here. You can do this by going up to the top line and finding the green, and then pulls a dotted line down, and then for me, since it's on the opposite side of that, just find the center but sometimes you might have to dimension it, it just depends so there I forgot to click all my profiles I'm just going to do control Z extrude click all my profiles again and cut and then I'm going to do side number six for side number six you could do this full thing with just a rectangular pattern but I want to show you the mirror tool so I'm just going to use that instead so I need a mirror line so I'm just gonna draw a line down the middle now you might need to dimension that but it should just find the center by going uh, finding that green dot so I'll do that again I'm gonna take my cursor along find the green dot click click and then mirror so geometry I want to select mirror line I want to select apply that's it done now I'll trim away this line now I'm going to use my rectangular pattern tool so my geometry now is two things both of them just going to do one direction I'm going to then change this to three and make this 12.5 this thing finish my sketch extrude click on my profiles put in that um, use cut and then that's it done. Now to finish it up, I'm just going to fill all my edges. So I just click the fillet tool. Your fillet tool might look a little bit different to mine. Just because this is a 2019 inventor. But it just works the same. This has more tools, but it just does all the same things. Okay with that. I'm going to change this radius to 5. Okay. And then I'm just going to make it look a wee bit nicer by maybe changing the colours. So I'm going to pick blue, click it, and then when it highlights the entire thing, like that, you can then pick your colour and it'll do the full thing. If you would just want to do individual faces, just click individual face, but if you want to do the full thing, uh, wait until it highlights the full thing. So I've changed my tool to, so what I want to do now is click the tick, and I want to do uh, dots, so I'm going to do these white it will automatically pick the colour picker tool, so you just need to click a couple of times. And then holding control, oops, so I accidentally selected the full thing, trying to do that too quick. I'll do it again. Hold control, take your time so you don't select the full thing like I did. And that's it. So final steps. Um, so if you're using, if you're wanting to take a screenshot of your model, um, you want to go to view. You can uh, render images in this, but if it's just a quick thing, I always try and set it to realistic and play about with my view options. Uh, your view options are good uh, because you can then change things like wireframe. This is a really good tool to get in the habit of using. If you want to just take a quick picture of what you've made and make it look nice really quick. Um, it's good to just play about with these parts. So uh, this video is just me going through it really quick. Uh, the point of it was to just go through it every single step really quick. So if you had to pause the video or slow the video down, that's totally fine. Um, if you want me to go over some of the tools individually, then I direct you to the video where I make this uh, a lot sm slower. It's in about four parts and it goes through each of the tools and how to use them properly. Um, and, uh, 
goes a bit above and beyond and is at a bit of a slower pace. So, hope that video helped or the other video helped and I'll see you in the next one.